প্রিয় দর্শক আপনাদের সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আমাদের আজকের ইন্টারভিউ সেশনে আজ আমাদের সাথে অতিথি হিসেবে যুক্ত রয়েছেন যুক্তরাষ্ট্রের ফ্রিডম অ্যান্ড প্রসপ্যারিটি সেন্টারের সিনিয়র পরিচালক ড্যান নিগেরা তো আমরা চলুন ড্যান নিগেরার সাথে কথা বলি এবং তার কাছ থেকে জানার চেষ্টা করি তিনি কি বিষয়ে কাজ করেন এবং আমাদের সম্পর্কে তার ধারণা কি ড্যান নিগেরা থ্যাংক ইউ ফর গিভিং আস টাইম ইটস আওয়ার গ্রেট অপরচুনিটি দ্যাট উই আর গেটিং ইন্টারভিউ অফ ইউ সো মাই ফার্স্ট কোয়েশ্চেন ইজ টু ইউ দ্যাট ইউ হ্যাভ বিন এনগেজিং ফর লং টাইম ইন ডুইং রিসার্চ অ্যান্ড ওয়ার্কিং অন দি কানেকশন বিটুইন প্রসপারিটি অ্যান্ড ফ্রিডম অ্যান্ড আই থিঙ্ক ইউ হ্যাভ অলসো ডান রিসার্চ অন বাংলাদেশ অ্যান্ড আদার সাউথ এশিয়ান কান্ট্রিজ সো হোয়াট ইজ ইউর ইভালুয়েশন অ্যাবাউট বাংলাদেশ মাই ইম্প্রেশন অফ বাংলাদেশ ইজ দ্যাট ফার্স্ট অফ অল ইটস আ ভেরি বিউটিফুল কান্ট্রি Um, with very uh, welcoming and um, very hospitable and very, very smart people. I enjoyed my uh, visit um, at two universities here in, in uh, Dhaka and uh, two think tanks um, where I talked about the conclusions of um, our work. Um, regarding Bangladesh from the perspective of our work is that um, very clearly Bangladesh has accomplished a lot in its economic development since its founding in 1971. It has a fast growth rate, which is, uh, which is undeniable. Um, at the same time, um, our work shows uh, that countries develop best when they have freedom um, in uh, their choice of their development path. And the way we think about freedom, it's economic freedom, legal freedom, but also political freedom. So um, I believe that Bangladesh has a bright future um, if it chooses the right development path that mobilizes the tremendous talent of the Bangladeshi people and uh, empowers them to grow uh, in the future. Uh, then I have seen that in your index, I mean prosperity and uh, freedom index, that Bangladesh position is 141, which is very lowest and uh, it's in the mostly unfree category. What makes Bangladesh position so down in the index? We have a freedom index and we have a prosperity index. And um, uh, in the freedom index, we look at three dimensions of freedom, economic freedom, legal freedom and political freedom. Um, and then we average the scores for those three freedoms. So, um, uh, and, and then for each of them, we have several indicators that we also give equal weighting to. So we don't interfere with, in any way with the data. And then we do use data from undisputable sources like the World Bank, the United Nations, uh, VDEM, which is an organization in Sweden, Sweden and so on. Um, so the ranking um, of uh, Bangladesh, uh, the low ranking um, in, the free, in our Freedom Index um, is the combination of the scores in all these dimensions, uh, not just in political but also economic uh, and legal freedom. But you see, whatever this type of issues actually raise, then the government doesn't actually want to agree with this uh, ranking or something like that, that that is done by the private uh, organization like you yeah so this is why exactly why we are, want to do our work um, um, i think most people when they think of the best path of development will will um, will argue that the best path to development is where the market in general and all the people are involved in choosing the best path to development. Um, and that's an impression, a feeling, an emotion that we have about it. But what we wanted to do was to have data, to have facts, and provide the source of our data, show very clearly what, what our methodology is. And then nobody should be able to argue with numbers. I saw this great quote the other day say, I'm not arguing with the thermometer when it says that it's hot or that it's cold. The thermometer gives me the temperature. So the same thing with our data. We have 19 indicators from 11 different sources. It should be undisputable what the numbers are. So in your view, what do you think? Why do we need to concentrate to improve in the index? Well, again, we have um, freedom 
and we have prosperity. So we talked about the Freedom Index, the, which has three sub-indexes, economic, political, and legal freedom. In the Prosperity Index, we measure six different things. Um, normally, when people think about prosperity, uh, they think about money. They need, and for a country, they think about GDP per capita. But we think that in defining the prosperity of the country, of a country, any country, there are other dimensions that are extremely important, education, health, the environment, uh, inequality, and also very importantly, the treatment of minorities that in our indexes we measure by looking at the religious minorities. So in terms of where Bangladesh should focus, I think Bangladesh should focus on all of this. There is a term that is uh, first development, then democracy. It is must talked in the developing country uh, like us. And this term actually comes from the government uh, people. So what do you think about it? Our research um, disagrees with that view. Um, what we are showing um, is that the countries that have that have achieved the most prosperity are the countries that have the most freedom as well. And um, actually, in my presentations in Bangladesh, I showed uh, an analysis that compared Russia and China, the two uh, biggest proposal, proponents of this um, view of development, which we call the autocratic capitalism view of development. So um, we compared Russia with Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania because Russia, the Russian Federation, and these three Baltic countries were all parts of, part of the Soviet Union, so they had the same starting point. But the Baltics chose freedom, and the Russian Federation didn't. And the Baltics developed much, much faster, are no longer uh, caught in the middle income trap. In the case of China, we compared it with uh, South Korea and Taiwan, and we are show which were equally poor, and they were also dictatorships in the 1960s, but then South Korea and Taiwan chose freedom, and they escaped the middle income trap and are doing fi much, much better. So we can prove with our research that the best way forward, the, and also the, the, the fastest and the most durable development comes from choosing freedom rather than autocracy as the path to development. So um, development brought by, I mean prosperity brought by development, you see uh, whether it is sustainable or equitable, what do you think? I think you use the exactly the key term, which is sustainable. Um, it is unquestionable that um, authoritarian um, uh, governments and authoritarian development models can show success for a while. For example, in the case of China, nobody can deny the extraordinary success of taking 800 million out of abject poverty and moving them up into a better level of, uh, of, of living. But as you can see right now, the growth rate of China is slowing down very, very significantly. Um, the, the problem with authoritarian development models is that they don't engage the creativity, the talent, the, 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 the decision-making capability, the resources of all the people. Especially for large countries, it's hard for a few people to make the decisions for everybody. Then you see our next election will be held at the end of this year or uh, at the beginning of uh, the next year. So U.S. government has already announced that if there is any irregularities in that election, then a visa sanction will be imposed who will be responsible. So uh, do you think this is effective tool to uh, hold free and fair election? Because we have some examples in, uh, in front of us. We can see some African countries, some other countries that USA imposed visa sanctions on those countries but election is not free and fair. So what do you think? The US government and uh, US Congress reflect the views of the American people. Um, and the American people, 
through sanctions, but in many other ways, express their approval or their disapproval of how um, governments around the world uh, behave, how they act. Um, and I think <clears throat> that when the US government imposes sanctions, uh, it expresses the disapproval of the American people with how certain governments or authorities or individuals uh, behave themselves. Um, whether it's uh, effective all times, um, that's a different, that's, that's, a, that's a large discussion, a complicated discussion. But it says something without any question, which is that the US government and the US, the American people, approve or disapprove of something. So I, I, I hear, for example, that the uh, foreign minister of Russia uh, visited uh, recently and said America should not interfere in the uh, internal matters of Bangladesh. That's not interference. Um, that is a message from the American people saying. American in, and its Western ally always calling for free and fair election to hold in Bangladesh. So what do we mean, I mean, the American means free and fair election? Yeah, so free and fair um, elections is, a, is an international standard that is very well known and very well accepted. Um, there are many international organizations that observe elections, that go to polling stations uh, to see that there is no intimidation of the, the voters. But before the election itself, um, there is a question of having a press that is free, that is not intimidated, um, that the opposition has access to, um, to the media uh, in general. Um, also that the opposition is in no way prevented from competing fairly um, in the election. So. Uh, they're international standards, and it's very well recognized and easy to determine what the free election is. It's one of those things where you say, I will know it when I see it, and I will recognize it when I see it. Um, but again, I think it's important to um, ask for international observers to confirm uh, that, the, that an election is free when this is necessary. It's not necessary in all countries, but when there is any doubt, uh, it would be helpful to have international organization confirm the fairness of the election. There is an alarming trend in our country that is uh, in the last two elections we have seen that people are not interested to go to the polling booth. They are not interested to cast their uh, vote, voting right. So how do we make them encouraged to come to the election uh, so that they can uh, give their choice? I think it would be very important to figure out if people didn't participate in those elections because they don't think elections are important or if they were discouraged from going to the elections or whether they felt that um, it doesn't matter if they, if they uh, participate or not. I think education is crucially important to start from early in school to explain to young people what citizenship is all about, where as a citizen of a country you have rights, but also you have obligations. And one of the obligations is to participate in the democratic process of the country and to contribute to uh, making choices about the future of the country. And elections are a key way to do that. We have a huge young population also, but we have lack of uh, training, finance, and other facilities. Uh, because uh, nowadays we see that most of the young people, they want to uh, be entrepreneurs rather than getting any government job or any other job. Uh, so uh, USA and other Western countries can do a lot to uh, make them entrepreneurs, like providing them with uh, training, finance, or other things. So what do you think? Are they doing this? And actually, I was reading uh, a report from the World Bank that there is a tremendous um, 
dynamism in the Bangladeshi society and that there, are, there is a lot of entrepreneurship, there are a lot of new companies being formed and there is a vibrant um, um, middle market segment of the economy. So I think it's a wonderful thing and I would encourage young people to take the risk. It's not easy to be an entrepreneur. You take a tremendous risk, but there are also tremendous rewards. Um, in terms of um, uh, help, support, encouragement, inspiration from abroad, again, I cannot speak for the US government, but I certainly hope that the US government is doing a lot to support that entrepreneurship. Um, and I would expect that USAID has programs um, in that respect. So I hope entrepreneurship will grow in Bangladesh and I hope that the United States will be a contributor because it's a way to develop the friendship between our peoples also. Is there anything your center is particularly doing in Bangladesh or in developing countries uh, like uh, making um, many more uh, entrepreneurs? Um, I, I think what um, our, our index um, shows I, um, is the importance of, um, of um, women's economic freedom. Um, and one of the great sources of entrepreneurship is women forming companies. And actually it's a heartwarming thing for us that not just in Bangladesh and not just in Asia, but everywhere in the world, one of the indexes that has shown the most improvement uh, was women economic freedom. So it's part of our economic freedom dimension. Um, so this is, the, and, and that will tend to reflect more the entrepreneurship part, this, the, middle in, the middle market and early stage companies. The other things that we mention, measure is trade freedom and investment freedom, which also reflect but less directly the entrepreneurship dimension. Thank you, Dan Negrab, for giving your important time. Uh, you have talked on a lot of issues. I think our viewers uh, will be knowing many things from your uh, discussion. So thank you once again for giving us time. And I wish your stay will be here blessed in Bangladesh. So thank you, Dan Negrab, for giving us time. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it very much.